Hello Minecrafters, Arctic Shark Games here, coming at you with another Minecraft Bedrock Edition Command Tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on the fill command and how to use it safely. Make sure you stick around in today's video long enough to talk about the safety of the fill command and how you guys can use it without causing a lot of damage in your world. I highly suggest you test all this kind of stuff out on a completely separate test world until you're fairly confident with the fill command. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. Please go ahead and like and subscribe over here at Arctic Shark Games as well as if you guys have a lot of questions questions on forward slash fill, go ahead and jump in our Shark Commander's Discord and we'll try to get some of those questions answered for you. So um, when you're trying fill commands, one thing you might run into is you want to make sure you're always running the fill command in a loaded area inside of your actual render distance in simulation or you're going to run into a can't place blocks inside the world error. One thing you can use to get around that if you master the fill command is you can actually you load a ticking area to use larger fill commands. Um, that's something we'll get into in another video. I will cover ticking areas itself. So without further ado, let's jump into the actual fill command. I highly recommend that you guys sort of skip over this beginning fill command and you just use the replace fill command whenever possible. But we're going to start right off with going over fill itself just in the basic sense of it. So the normal fill command, when you type it in the chat here, comes up with a few options for us. So we're going to go ahead and type in forward slash fill. And then we have two sets of coordinates we're going to type in. So just to get past that so we can look at the syntax here, we're going to go ahead and throw some some tildes in. Where's the little tildes? Alright, so we pretend we type two sets of coordinates in there for an example, and we're going to choose a block type for an example. Alright, and then you can see that the fill command comes up with a few different options for us. We have destroy, hollow, keep, outline, and replace. We're going to go over all those options at some point during the video here, but right now we're just going to start right off with the basic fill command. So you can see it says forward slash fill from a coordinate to a coordinate with a tile name, a block data, and then you can actually type in one of these extra portions of the syntax should we need to. So that's basically what we have to do is we have to choose two sets of outside corners for our object. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to make a single layer um, right here we're going to do just one layer so we're going to choose this set of coordinates here and we're going to want to bust out our notepads here. So my coordinates are 430, 4280 so I'm writing that down here and then I'm going to run over to my other set of coordinates and then I can write this one down as well. This one's 440, 4290 and this one here Alright, so we're going to do the very basic version of the fill here when we're going to type two sets of actual manual coordinates in. So we're going to do fill and then we're going to do my first set of coordinates which was 430, 4 to 80 and then my second set of coordinates was 440 4 to 90. I highly suggest you guys double check your coordinates as many times as you can and then we're just going to choose a block. I'm going to choose stone and then I just want the basic stone so we're going to do zero. What that zero means is there's a lot of different types of quote unquote stone. So if I chose stone zero I'm going to get actual stone. If I chose stone one I would get granite and so on and so forth. The same type of thing with logs, the same type of thing with colored concrete. All those fun things are actually in the tiled data. So we're going to choose stone zero and you can see that we went ahead and filled 121 blocks it says over there in the chat and you can tell that I have accurately filled my square here. Now there's a few different ways we could have done that there. Um, we don't actually always have to use XYZ, we can also use tildes. So remember we wrote down that first set of coordinates there so this is probably one of the most common ways I will run a fill command is I'll go run uh, forward slash fill and then we're going to do a set of tildes which means my position here those little squiggly lines that first squiggly line is the x coordinate that second squiggly line is the y coordinate that third squiggly line means the z coordinate so that's my position where I'm standing and then we're going to choose that other coordinate that was across this stone block area from me I'm going to go back to that coordinate and then let's change this here to I don't know let's say a log log 3 I think 
that one might be spruce or jungle. I'm not 100% sure which log 3 is, but we'll throw that in there. And you can see I actually wrote the wrong coordinate down, and I ended up over here, actually. So I, I went, I mixed my two coordinates up. So you got to be very careful. We double-check our coordinates here. Luckily, nothing too crazy happened when we're using this not-safe version of the fill command, remember? So we're going to go fill, tilde, 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 and then we're going to go 430, 4, 280 it was. And then we're going to try that again. We'll use jungle, or whoops, log 3, which I believe was jungle. So now you can see we changed this whole area successfully there because I actually used the right coordinates. So now that was how you do it with one set of tildes and one set of coordinates. So now I went ahead and actually made this a perfect 10 by 10 area for ease of use for us. So you can go ahead and see that I'm standing sort of in the high point here at 444, 290. I'm going to actually go over here and stand in the low point at 430 to 80. So now that I'm in the low point, it'll be the easiest for us to figure out here. We're going to use um, offsets on my position this time to fill that same area. So this time we're just going to give ourselves two sets of tildes. And then this first one we're going to leave as tilde, 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 because that's where I'm standing, right? And then this one here, I would like to go positive 10 blocks on the X and positive 10 blocks on the Y. And then what should we use this time? Let's see, we'll just do dirt, I guess, dirt. And then we're gonna fill that in there. And you can see I still got that same area there because I chose a position that was offset by 10 blocks in each direction, which basically still chose this position here. So those are three different ways that you can actually type your coordinate sets on the fill command. I highly recommend that you guys do not stop there and you move on to one of the next sets of commands we're about to talk about here, which is going to be fill replace and fill keep. So if we go ahead back here and let me note which one I'm on the high position. So we go ahead here and we type in forward slash fill. We use my set of coordinates, for example, here, and then we'll go 434, 280, which is that low point. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We'll just go back to stone, and we'll try stone 1 to see if that was, in fact, granite. So what we're going to do here instead now, this is where the fill command becomes a lot safer. So we're going to type in the word replace, and then we're going to type in dirt because I have placed dirt last time, and we're going to do dirt zero, and this basically here, what this means is that it's only going to use stone one to replace dirt zero if I had left some air in there, or if I had already had some stone of some kind, you know, if I had some fancy build in there, or some command blocks, it will not replace any of that stuff, it'll only replace dirt. So the first block type that you choose is the one that is going to be actually physically replacing the second block type that you choose in the fill command. So now you can see that it left this one position here that I had done here with a random um, block of air that I was standing in, and it filled everything else in with granite. So I have another example of that over here. We're going to go ahead and choose two outside corners on this area here. And my first outside corner, I'm going to go ahead and stand right here, and I'm going to note down these coordinates, which is 409, 11, 316. And then I'm going to run over here, and I'm going to stand in my second outside corner, as we usually do there. And then we're going to go ahead and type in another fill command, just as I did with the replace. So we're going to go fill, tilde, tilde, tilde for my position. Then we're going to do my new set of coordinates here. And then 316. Alright, so that's my set of coordinates. And then we're going to go ahead and fill this. I think I'm going to use a funky one here. We're actually going to fill with a command block. Command block is 0, and we're going to replace cobble deep slate. So what this is going to do is this is actually going to leave part of this build here, and this is going to only replace the cobble deep slate. All right. So now we ran that there, and if you guys are enjoying this video, don't forget to go ahead and like and subscribe over here at Arctic Shark Games and jump in that Discord. So you can see that this here is regular deep slate that I used to disguise the cobble deep slate, so it only replaced the actual deep cobbled deep slate and it left all my regular deep slates how that worked out for us there that's an awesome command as far as trying to use the fill command i probably use replace about 90 percent of the time in most instances um, this is the safest way to do it now let's say for example we wanted to only fill in air um, instead of 
all these random blocks that we have here. So let's make a couple of designs in here just randomly so that we know that in fact I did have multiple block types in here for us. And I don't really know what I'm drawing right now, but I'm just drawing out a little shape. Alright, we got this U shape here, and then we're going to go ahead and cut a hole of air outside of this U shape. So then you can actually see now when I stand back in our usual position, we're going to run a keep fill command this time, and the keep command is going to actually keep all the solid blocks, and it's going to only replace the air with our selected block type. So we're going to go forward slash fill. We're going to do tilde, 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 and then we're going to choose that low point over here again, which was this coordinate. And then let's see what we should fill this with here. We'll do a netherite block. Let's get fancy. We'll do netherite. Netherite block. And then we're going to write keep. So we went netherite block to zero. So we selected our type of netherite block. And then we're going to go ahead and put keep. And now you can see that this only did that one position of air that I had there and this position of air here. So this is a great use for the fill command to be safe. To fill in basically areas that are already hollow, you can use this to fill in the center. Now another version of the fill command that I would consider as a more dangerous one, this one here can really lag your world out if you did a massive fill command. This one here is called destroy and what destroy is going to do is as it breaks these blocks it's actually going to drop the item for us down. So we'll go ahead and use this same area and we're going to type in netherite block or actually let's do air here. So we're going to destroy with air this time. So this basically is not going to place anything down. It's just going to leave air there. And then we're going to destroy. And then this is going to drop all those blocks for us. And you can see that they're all floating there. And I'm sure you can imagine if I had done that to like a mountainside or a desert or some large area, how that would have really, really left quite a lot of items floating out in the world and it could have lagged us out pretty good so i don't really recommend you use the destroy unless you're using it for something such as maybe like a special tool to mine faster and you wanted to drop this three by three area of blocks at the player you know that would be the good use for destroy um, I don't recommend really using it for too many normal filling capabilities. So that moves us right on to our next one which we have hollow and outline. So what we're going to do this time is actually I'm going to build a room for an example. And I think I'll build it right here inside of this normal area. And then we'll outline it maybe on the, go the gold blocks. So this time here we're going to use that same set of coordinates and everything like that. And we're going to choose the type of block that we'd like to fill the inside with. So I would like to do sea lanterns. We're going to kind of make one of my normal typical basic command rooms here. So we're going to go sea lantern zero. And then this time we're going to use the word hollow. And actually what I'm also going to do is I would like to change the Y height to be a good size room because remember we're filling a flat area this entire time. So we're going to change this Y height and we're going to start to do a large area. So we're going to do, I don't know, maybe 10 blocks high. So that'll give us, say, 5 blocks on the inside, I think. So we'll go boom. And now you can see that I filled a large cube here, but because we used the hollow command rather than a regular fill replace, this in here actually left all the air blocks, so it made us a nice little room here made out of sea lanterns. Now let's say that this is a secure room, you know, that you guys wanted to keep safe on your server for your commands or something like that, and maybe we wanted to go ahead and fill this room on the outside with it. We'll outline it with some bedrock. So I'm going to write down this set of coordinates here, 429, and then I went one lower, and then I'm doing 279. And then we're going to go over here, and we'll stand right here. So we're now one above this here, and we were one lower than this over there. So we're going to go fill my position, and we're going to do our most recent set of coordinates. And then I'm going to use bedrock zero. And then we're going to use the word outline. And as you can see now, this has surrounded my room with a bedrock 
cube, and inside it left the sea lanterns, which of course had already left the area. So now we have a nice and secure room, and we'll make ourselves a nice little door to get on out of here. We can walk right out, and you can see that I have a nice layer of sea lantern and bedrock, and it went on the floor, the ceiling, everything. This is a great command to make very fast rooms and I highly recommend using this to make your command rooms if your command rooms are not absolutely massive at least. So if you guys found this video helpful please go ahead and like and subscribe over here at Arctic Shark Games on YouTube. Throw a like on the video and jump in that Shark Commander's Discord with us and as always keep commanding.